I don't like that, <laughs> but I think we should start the podcast with it. That's just me putting it out there. Okay. That's the first podcast moment of the new year is you doing a disgusting mustache rub <laughs> onto the mic. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, guys. It's 2019. We have not recorded a podcast episode for, I think, the Mayans called it on the calendar a while. <laughs> um, we're back now. That's, That's all I good. got. I'm excited as hell, dude. I know. We've already hung out and had conversations, but it's not recorded, so it doesn't count. Yeah, and we really haven't spoken as much. Like We've kind of been getting on each other about not catching up or having any sort of brotherly correspondence because we're saving all the content for you guys. Anytime Gus starts to speak to me, I just go, eek, eek, no, no, no. <laughs> Ow, ouch, my little ears. Ow, owie, somebody call the police if you're a neighbor hearing. <laughs> We don't call the police here. You ever see those like signs? Maybe it's like a, a no. trashier Midwest thing. Um, there, it's uh, Is it it, like they'll kill you if you <laughs> trespass. That's yeah, that threat shit. It's like a, a a big hunk of wood and painted on it in like I don't know why, but it's like clearly misspelled letters and shit. Like okay. some fucking redneck wrote it and it said, "We ain't dialing nine one one." And underneath it, there's a revolver hanging. <laughs> and it's just I see it in Midwest homes all the time. Like a wooden revolver no, or like, a real revolver. I mean, I don't know. It's metal. <laughs> They just grab it under the sign, and they're like, all right, I only have... The, you walk in front of the sign, you're in trouble, buddy. <laughs> I love that it's, like, misspelled, too. It's like, you're in the backwoods, boy. <laughs> you're about to get shot. You're like, international waters out here. We don't call the police. <laughs> we write them letters. Right, is that, like, a Shawshank reference? No. So, God, that was so loud, too. Was it really? I feel like whenever you do something on the podcast, I don't know if it's just my feedback, but the sound effect is like a hundred times in my ear. <laughs> I don't think it'll show up. I think that was my, like, not uh -huh. in the mic. Oh, it was yeah. just me hearing it. <laughs> Should I just have every time I change directions, just, like, fully rub my mustache across it? Yeah, I can do the yeah, same so thing. Yeah. Are the mics good? Are they good? The wall's good? No. Mine's not really making a satisfying... It's not as good. It's because mine's like barbed wire peach fuzz <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> mine's terrible, dude. I wish I could grow. I like my mustache, um, but the the thing is, everybody in my life, you know, like my girlfriend and my family and stuff, everyone's like, dude, that looks horrible. I told you I like the mustache. And I'm like, I the thing is like, I know it looks goofy and dumb. I'm I not don't under think it looks goofy and dumb. I think it looks like a regular mustache, but I'm also pro mustache altogether. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm I don't very count. pro. But keep saying what you're saying. Mustache. Saying. But everyone is will say like, "Hey, it looks dumb." And I'm like, "That is why I'm keeping it. I'm not under any disillusion like this is a good style choice. It's uh, the look. It's my dumb look." Yeah, we do comedy videos no matter what my mom says in the comment section. And <laughs> I, like I've I've thought of that too of just like, "Hey, it would be real dumb if I do a mustache for a video and I still want to." Cuz mm -hmm. it's like it adds to the joke. If you oh, look yeah. a little funny. I like doing it. But I like the mustache. I'm, I'm saying it again. Thank you. I need to trim it though. It's a mess on the face here. Um, did your family ever give you like good or bad feedback about like your videos and stuff? Um, n I, I mean, good feedback. My mom doesn't really watch my videos. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's because she doesn't really, she's never had a problem with me like swearing or anything like that as I got older, but I think she just doesn't want to see me in the light of like making full jokes that I, when I make them, I'm not thinking about her watching it. You know oh, what I mean? Oh yeah. That's a good point. And like, I would say things to my dad that I wouldn't say to my mom just because, you know, like. I, dads are like that. Yeah. So my like, I love you, and yeah, I would ne guys. I would never tell my mom I loved her. That would be, but my dad, any day of the week. Good. Actually, every day of the week. Good. But never my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if she's ever listening to this, which she's not. Love you, mom. See, you gotta hide it where she's not gonna find <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give her those. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, my dad is like super support. My mom's super supportive of my stuff too. But my dad watches all of them. Um, and, oh shit, Tony! I just said <laughs> I said my sister's name. I don't want that to be public knowledge for I think her reasoning and also mine. Mm -hmm. So Tony, you're gonna block. You're gonna keep that moment in. And what you're gonna do? I'm explaining to the audience, and Tony, Sick. it's gonna be block, and we're gonna beep it or cut it out. So, anyways, mm -hmm. and my and Tony, um, they like watch it occasionally. But what about you? Um, well, yeah, you reminded me too in terms of fucking doxing shit. I got a story for later. Um, but no, my, my family's like, they've always been really supportive of it. But what has really bothered me is like, I really don't think that like my content is like this, like edgy, like swearing, big badass kind of shit. Like mm. I swear sometimes in videos, especially commentary stuff when it's like 15 minutes, like, yeah, yeah that's more of just me being myself and I'll like, I'll, I'll let loose a couple of F bombs. They'll fly. You know, what is that? 
That's the one that you're not supposed to say, but you could say a couple of years ago. That's what you're talking about. You drop, right? You're talking about the one. Um, the four. Letter. Right. We're in agreement. We're both. Yeah. Not four letters. Six. That's what you say in commentary videos. All the time. You're dropping those all the time. F- fucker. That's. I don't think we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fucker. Okay. See, I put. I started this bit as a way to like jokingly incriminate you, but I don't want to go even further because that would really <laughs> no, incriminate like, you. He says fuck. All right, go ahead. back, bitch. Yeah, you know, like, and the thing is, I totally understand a little bit of, like, family initial stuff. Like, especially... Uh, fuck, I did it, too. God, <laughs> beep it out. <laughs> Sorry, Tony, for the work. <laughs> you guys yeah. might have noticed audio or video again. We had to beep another name that we put in there. <laughs> we suck. Um, we'll do it live. Um, no, but my uncle, who shall remain nameless, um, like kind of started joking about it. You know, like, oh, well, you, you use the F word all the time in your videos and stuff. And then like kind of seriously being like, hey, you need to stop saying that. Mm. And then let's like, I, I hate it because like collectively I'll go home for like Christmas and stuff. And then the family will be just sort of like, you know, oh, Gus says the F word. Mm. You know, that little like we're a little small town can't yeah. say the F word stuff. And it's like. I totally get that it would kind of bother them, but I even, I told them like, just like, cause I played along with the jokes for a while mm. and then I kind of came to them like a year ago and I was just like, Hey guys, I know like we kind of joked about this, but now like you're kind of starting to tell me like, seriously, like, Hey, you know, people are coming up to me like, Hey, you're really missing out. You're going to lose opportunities. Cause you say swear. What the like, fuck? what? Shut up. Fuck so I'm like, off. I'm kidding. Unless it's a family member you care about. <laughs> no, no. I fuck off with that argument. Yeah. You know? No, for sure. And I love all of them. I don't have a problem with any of my family members, but it's like, I, I told them, I was like, guys, I understand. I acknowledge it. You know, like, please trust that. Like I'm an adult. I'm doing these things. And like, you know, they make, they, they're, they're working for me. It's just part of me. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not selling a part of myself. Cause I say the F word, Yeah. you know, and they still keep fucking doing it. It's just, it's comes from a place of not getting the atmosphere of the internet right yeah. now. Like if you, I mean, you, we just wouldn't be where we were. I'm not saying we're he- here now and where we are on the internet because we swear, <laughs> because of the but if I feel like, especially with commentary stuff is if I told everyone like, guys, my language is family friendly. People wouldn't watch that. Yeah. They want to see someone go, what the fuck is that? You yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like my Bohemian Rhapsody video or the ones where I don't even cut them. It's like, do you mm-hmm. want me to go, dang it. I'm upset, guys. Dang it. Guys, this is a real problem here. <laughs> Can we get someone on this, please? Ninja. He doesn't swear. Let's get Ninja on this. <laughs> I don't know, though. It's like, I just wish. It's always weird going back home, too, like, because uh, I come from a really small town of, like, a thousand people. When I go back, like, I knew everybody in the town pretty much, you know, and people people act differently sometimes. They mm. come up and ask weird questions and try to get favors and shit sometimes. And it's just like, uh, yeah, you know, that's I mean, you've you've had to deal with that more of like hometown people like asking for Internet favors. Just because, yeah, because the, the town's so small, you know, and everyone thinks that they I, they have some element of a connection to you which is like really flattering and stuff. And the people were like supportive, but it's like people come out of the woodwork, you know, it's like, Hey, remember when you were in uh, uh, algebra class in sixth grade with my daughter, do you think you could edit her softball highlight video? <laughs> it's like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> dude. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm telling you right now, I would fucking lose it. If one of the videos on your channel was like Jennifer's softball highlight. video. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. <laughs> Maybe that should be my April fool's thing. Yeah. A 40 minute highlight video <laughs> on like windows movie maker at the Star transitions and You're shit. not in it even for a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but no, I just don't I don't understand people just thinking that they deserve something like that, you know? Like asking for favors and shit like that. Like I am happy to help people out with shit, but it's always like, Can you edit this for me for free? Or like, can you give my band a shout out? Or like my dog needs surgery, can you shout out the GoFundMe? Mm-hmm. It's like obviously I want your dog to get better. I can't fucking clog it up. I do it once, everybody goes, You did it for Gabby. Why can't yeah. you do that? I mean, yeah, not even just from your home t- hometown. That's the thing is, I, I want to keep from us sounding like shitty. Like, yeah. we're not going to fucking <laughs> help you. But, like, if we start, I think everyone would understand. If we started giving shout outs to people's GoFundMes out of place in the middle of videos, mm. then you'd have to pick and choose. Uh, like, okay, so is this person saving their dog worthy enough to go in instead of this adult man who has cancer yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean you're gonna start doing like a comparison of like who has the worst stuff and that's not what our content's about that's so true that was a real reference by the way someone like asked me to shout out their dogs GoFundMe, 
Ooh, like because they needed a surgery. I don't even think it was life saving. Not to just be like fuck that dog, <laughs> but I think they like it was like a leg. You can walk operation. with three legs. You got four of them. Don't be greedy. <laughs> um, oh, I don't. This is completely. Un- it was like a stream of thought that I can't mention some stuff because really? stuff that happened back home. But should I talk about the TV mount at all? Yeah. <laughs> today, okay. Without boring people like crazy. Super long story short. Uh, for the first day is I got back two days ago. And I spent the first day trying to mount the new TV I got. Mm -hmm. Um, I got the stand on Amazon. I got the TV on Amazon. TV's a Samsung. The stand is like some brand. What was it? Cheetah? What the fuck? Yeah, it was called Cheetah brand. (laughs) So fuck Samsung for this. But the two bottom holes on a Samsung TV are basically longer than the uniform screws. So you have to go buy them extra. And that was a whole thing of Gus even helping me out in a full day where I didn't get the TV mounted. And then another stuff of not having the right tools here. I'd have mounted TVs before. We just didn't have the right stuff. So I just uh, hired Geek Squad from Best Buy to come do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to even go into the phone call or anything like that. Yeah. But basically, <laughs> when uh, they were here and they were about to mount the TV, the guy's like, all right, so how high do you want it on the wall? And it's across from my bed. So I told him, I said, like, I want it high enough um, to where I can watch TV and, like, having my legs up, you know, when I'm laying down, wouldn't uh, my beautiful knees wouldn't get in the way or anything Thank like God. that. Yeah, that would be a disaster. Um, I'd just be staring at them the whole time instead of <laughs> Avengers Infinity War. Um, but then, so he, it was kind of awkward. He's like, all right, well, why don't you just lay on the bed and then tell me what looks right? <laughs> <laughs> so they had uh, one of the, one of the, there's two people there. And one of the people were putting this, like the mount on the TV that hooks up. And so they're on the ground and I just have to like walk past them and like lay on my bed yeah. and <laughs> tell them what looks right. And he has the height of the TV out on a tape measure. And he's putting it on the wall, and the second it lines up with the top of my window, which is like less than a foot from the ceiling, Mm -hmm. I go, that's great. The top of the TV lining up with the top of the window looks perfect. And he goes, all right, got it. So Gus and I are out here talking in the main room, what, like 20 minutes? Yeah. And then I walk back in to see how everything's going. And I shit you not, these guys are mounting the mount of the TV, which goes in the center, at the top of my window, Mm -hmm. which is literally impossible to mount the TV there. The TV would be way too big to where you'd have to saw off the top (laughs) of the TV to mount it. And I was like, hey, um, with the way the mount, well, first you and I went into the hallway and I, uh, cause I, I brought you back to see it and we were like, what the fuck? Yeah. You're like, you got to say something. <laughs> so I, I went back in. I was like, Hey, uh, where the mount is right now, does the top of the TV meet where the window is? Yeah. And he's just like, Oh no. <laughs> and he, I'm like, okay. Uh, I thought just, we, I was trying to be so nice. Cause I'm never like mean to, to people working. Cause it's just, they're gonna, if you're mean to people who work, uh, or we're doing something for you. They're just going to not want to do a good job. Yeah. And also I'm not a bad human being. Uh, but, uh, so I was just like, um, well, I, I just thought we discussed the, that it would be perfect if the top lined up there. And he's mm-hmm. like, Oh, and I was like, okay, so is it too tall? Yeah. <laughs> so do you want me to move it down then? And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. um, that would be good. Cause I want the top to line up. And he's like, okay, fine. And then they did it, which is like not super eventful, but these are people who professionally mount TVs and they were putting the mount like six inches from my ceiling. Yeah. Which is like, what in what fucking world, even (laughs) if the TV fit, would I want it like touching (laughs) my ceiling and just like feet and feet of space under it? It's like you ever go into like a waiting room or something and you see how they like corner mount the TVs. You're like, that's really fucking high up there. (laughs) It would be like that. It's like that without the corner mount. It's just like pressed against one of the walls in the corner on the top. (laughs) So, yeah, that was that was just what happened today for from us, I guess. Big day. Big day around the homestead. Big fun day. The TV's great, though. Boom. On the homestead. You ever live on a homestead? No. No? From the suburbs, so. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever think about, like, uh, uh, or how do I say it? Do you ever find yourself kind of darkly wishing that you almost had kind of, like, a end-of-the-world scenario to be like, I wonder if I could survive, you know? Yeah, I used to, during the zombie stuff, I always liked coming up with a plan. Yeah. Um, I When I was a huge fan of, like, Rooster Teeth stuff uh, before, like, I just don't watch as much now. Mm-hmm. They even had, this is, like, full nerdy day stuff, but they had, like, an Ask Me About My Zombie Plan shirt, and, like, when I was 
14 and uninteresting. I was like, then people will ask me. I'll get to tell them, <laughs> go to Canada. Ooh. That was my plan, was go to Canada in the middle of the woods because then you're not going to get fucked with, really. That's a good idea. Um, I think probably... Getting there would be extremely difficult. Yeah, with the border laws and everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with, with the wall and everything. <laughs> the post-apocalyptic <laughs> wall. Um, I think probably middle of America woods would be mm. good you know because yeah. then it's like the winters aren't going to just destroy you yeah and you still are in the woods and when we drove through for uh the road trip to move here it's like nothing is out here yep it, which is nice in its own way but mm-hmm. uh yeah that would be perfect for apocalypse stuff i think that if i ever got like super rich i would be not like a paranoid thing but out of a fun hobby and also a just in case way which i guess is a little paranoid i'd like to maybe prep a couple things you know just like oh, a couple yeah. tubs of like oh here's water and food and stuff dude we've talked about it already the fault line fucking scares the shit out of me mm-hmm. sometimes i'll just be laying in bed and then I'll just go full doomsday in my head of like, all right, how the fuck would Gus and I get out of this place? Yeah, like we're way high up in an apartment, so we're already probably going to instantly die. We'll die for sure. Yeah, (laughs) which is kind of reassuring. If I was ground floor, I'd be like, I probably got a scrabble out there. I'm not going to make it. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, yeah, and then we're... we. Uh, like a car is not an option yeah even if we had one here yeah we don't even have one and then <laughs> i guess you could tr- i mean th- if it worked still the bird scooters would be a great fucking option but then people would beat the shit out of you for a bird scooter yeah because they desperately would want to get out of there mm-hmm. i think honestly maybe it would be go to the coast and then maybe just go north or south because just getting out of la la is maybe the worst place to possibly be in a doomsday scenario because the mm-hmm. traffic would just destroy everybody oh yeah probably no, that's fucking horrible. New York would be really bad too. Yeah, that would be way worse. <laughs> yeah, it's on the population. Too. Yeah, then you. I mean, I guess you you swim. Can you imagine how deafening it would be too when like everyone's trying to escape the traffic all at oh once? Oh my god! And, I mean, it would just be a resounding chorus of "A, I'm walking." Yeah. I thought you were gonna say honking, so you really did catch me by surprise there. I like that one. No, I was setting myself up for a bad joke. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't laugh, but I liked it. Thanks. It means a lot coming from you. Really. No, I do not value your opinion at all. I was going to drink my water, but now I've lost my thirst. <laughs> like losing your appetite? Yeah, but just immediately. But lost the- <laughs> Is that even possible to lose your thirst? No, that's why. I, oh. Good job. I don't think so. Actually, no. You Probably could. not, right? You're I mean, you could thirsty. Get, you could forget about how thirsty you are. I guess. But you can't lose it. Because your hunger thing, like your flight or f- fight or flight, like stuff is kind of directly tied to digestion stuff too you know like if you're in a danger mode or if you get really worried or just shocked you lose the ability to be hungry kind of yeah and that's never i mean i don't know do you think about drinking water in those situations though no okay so i think we i think we finally scientifically proved it well i guess you but the thing is you would lose maybe in the minute you'd be distracted from doing it but if you really stopped and were like okay i'm focused down again i think you'd still be like yeah i'm still just as thirsty though yeah but the hunger would not be there yeah agreed i would i wouldn't know though i haven't been drinking this is my first drink in a long time i you know i've been rationing for don't pee january so Mm, yeah we haven't been doing it at all somebody dude i saw that did you see that response tweet to my o'hare tweet what I tweeted about being in the O'Hare bathroom and they thought it was because I was peeing in the O'Hare bathroom. I go when I'm in an airport bathroom or any public bathroom, I go in to make sure I don't find any of you guys (laughs) losing don't pee January. (laughs) Do you just walk in with a camera? I make sure. Uh (laughs) I kick the doors in. I go, anybody watch the Gus and Eddie podcast here? You shouldn't if you're holding your dick or holding your vag. I go into both. I'm not. Holding your vag to really (laughs) really pee. Ring it out. Yeah, you just you get a firm grip on like the vulva. It's like uh, it's like uh, squeezing an orange. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was gonna give you a chance to rebuttal. No, <laughs> nope, I said what I said. Didn't mean it. It's like squeezing an orange. Did you notice your shirt matches the can? Does it? Not perfectly, but it's still there. You got the, a scheme going. Look at the really original joke on it too that you haven't seen anywhere else. Oh um, shit! It's like a for the audio listeners, you're missing out. <laughs> Let me describe what I'm seeing. The shirt says beer, and it's a bear with deer antlers. Inter- so when you see the word beer, you think it's going to be, say, a can or a bottle of beer. Dare I say a keg? Or even a fucking keg, but then it's one of these fucked up creatures, one of these abominations going against what God made. I don't think this guy made it on the ark at all. I'll say it. <laughs> I don't think so. 
Would you believe that I, honest to God, I bought this uh, at a taxidermy shop for five dollars? <laughs> Would I believe that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> easily. <laughs> it's probably the easiest thing to believe I've ever heard. I was just there and I was like, "Can I get one of those beer shirts?" Five bucks. All right, <laughs> dude. I've noticed like merch of stores in Wisconsin are so cheap. Mm-hmm. Like when we were at uh, uh, the, I don't even know, is it cross country? You can say cross, like a restaurant place. Yeah, yeah cross country in Wisconsin. Um, their, their merch, you know, if that's in the suburbs anywhere, they'd be like, Oh, it's 25 bucks for a shirt or something. Yeah. It's 10 bucks for sure. Yeah. It's cheap. Yeah. Well, cause they get them printed for next to nothing over there too. And then they're just like, yeah, I don't know. People from the community will wear it and it's good advertising. Yeah. They even have, um, uh, <clears throat> in that, in Eagle river, they have the, the like press for shirts there. So really? they don't even have to go anywhere. Damn. Cause it's a tourist place. Tourist. I like it. Do you want to look at some preguntas? That's uh, questions in Spanish. I got it. You got some preguntas? Yeah, I got screenshots of them. Hold okay. on. Let me just pull out the old phone there. Wow. That's an old piece of garbage phone you got yeah, there. Yeah, shitty one. I'm sorry. I had somebody tweet at me who, to everyone, that, like, I ha- I got an iPhone X, like the old model. It's not, you know, it's the year old model, too. I didn't get the newest phone. You didn't I even just, need to justify I'm, that. You yeah. had an old ass phone before. Yeah, so. I had the 6S for like four years. So, uh, or three years. But, um, yeah, like somebody, uh, somebody tweeted at me, and I'm sure he just, he's like, I'm just, um, can I just ask why you would ever spend a thousand dollars on a cell phone? It's like, one, it's not a thousand dollars anymore. Mm-hmm. Two, all phone carriers don't ask you to play, pay the flat rate when you buy it. It's like doing the two year plans, but now mm-hmm. they're monthly. And three, I was like, the S nine is like a hundred dollars more. And I'm just trapped in this fucking Apple way. So it's like for, for FaceTime with my family who all have iPhones. Cause we're all trapped because of Apple mm-hmm. and iMessage and any other Apple feature. Would I pay a hundred dollars extra for three years of use? Like, yeah, it's not that fucking crazy. Yeah, that's stupid as shit. And I, I hate that argument too. Like, I would not spend that on a phone. Like, it's not unreasonable to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. The device that you use every day, every day, and I'm gonna keep it like three and a half years. Yeah, that's not that much. It's just stupid. Yeah. So, um, all right, I'll get to the questions. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that guy's probably really nice. I didn't, I didn't mean it. I it's hate just... him. I'll say <laughs> it. <laughs> um, okay. I. This is a pretty good one to start on. Um, this is from, should, are we saying people's, I feel like we should I say, say the people's ads. Names. Yeah. Okay. So at Yuli J, uh, Gus and Eddie, what videos were you most nervous about uploading? I'm talking like an overwhelming feeling of, oh no, maybe I shouldn't do this. Uh, that was all one word. Um, I have a feeling it's your recent videos on the YouTube copyright and she, she or he said lame tomatoes instead Ooh. of flame potatoes. Freak. Pretty good. That's a zing. Uh, but I want to hear more about what was going on on your end. Ooh, good. Yeah, you go first. Yours is a big spicer. Okay, so if you just watch Gus's videos, I had a 21-minute video that was a follow-up to one before um, about this guy playing potatoes. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but he's he fucking – his content, at least in what he does, fucking sucks of, like, filming people and harassing them and posting it to the internet. Assaulting them, um, Yeah, yeah. He even kissed a dude on the cheek when he didn't give him consent. Sexual assault, which you'd, you'd be surprised how many people in the comments are like, dude, are you fucking serious? You called kissing somebody assault, you fucking idiot? <laughs> it's like, okay, first, just any, like, you're going to get arrested if you don't know, for, like, any crime, if you don't know anything about the law like yeah. that. But um, I was, with this video, by the way, if you could throw that video a like, I got, like, dislike rated multiple times by the dude's fans, and, like, it's not representative of the whole of people who watch, so if you want to throw it a like and be nice, that's cool. If not, that's fine. Um, nervousness of uploading it. I think it was weird because, like, the first time I had made the video, I wasn't nervous at all because he didn't have that big of a following. And then I had dealt with his following kind of attacking me, so I was like, I think I told you before, I was fully prepared to have my Twitter and Instagram mass reported and deleted. Mm -hmm. Like I was fully like, okay, I might lose my Twitter and Instagram over this. So that was kind of nerve wracking just because I like making jokes on those two. Um, It's not like the worst thing in the world to lose those. Mm -hmm. I didn't really give a shit. Um, It's, it's kind of freeing when you, when you see somebody's content and you know, like, Oh, okay. If you're a fan of this person, you just like have low empathy skills. Like you're just not 
that great of a person. I would never write off like that big group of people, but like they're watching people get harassed and assaulted and they're like, Duh. yeah. <laughs> so like, it's honestly not that nerve wracking getting ready for the video. Cause you're like, okay, there are a portion of people who will hate this video, mm -hmm. but they're not people I would want the opinion of. And they're not people that I would want being fans of me. I wouldn't want to gain a subscriber out of somebody who's like, well, I love that guy's stuff, but this guy roasted him pretty hard. So mm -hmm. this was a good video. So it was like nerve wracking of losing um, my my social medias, but not of like having to deal with some kind of big fallout. It was like yeah. pretty there's consequence lists because I was just on the like higher end of it. You yeah, know what so I mean? Clear, I wasn't though. committing crimes. I was even, just calling it out. Yeah. It's not even an objective. Like, yeah, you were on the, it's like you were on the high ground. Yeah. Of everything I mean, there, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's a whole thing. There's a whole thing following it that maybe I'll talk about on another podcast, but I'm just fucking exhausted mm -hmm. with the whole situation. That's why I haven't posted a video in like three weeks is mm -hmm. cause we've been back home and then also Christmas and everything. So what there about you, know. you for the, I feel like the copyright one would make you as nervous as other ones. Maybe. I don't know. Go the ahead. only reason the copyright one made me a little bit nervous was because I genuinely, it had happened and I immediately flew into it. <laughs> mm. So I've, I've done that a couple times in the past and like sometimes like I misspeak and I was really lucky with how much I did not get wrong in that. Mm. But I did get one thing wrong because I said that the person that claims uh, the work that YouTube decides for them who does it. But no, it's the person that makes the claim yeah. decides. You know what? That was such an actual nice thing to get wrong because yeah. then people were like, no, Gus, dude, it's worse than yeah. that. <laughs> they weren't going like, fuck you for doing that. They're like, dude, it's even worse than you thought, which yeah. was nice because like nobody was going like, fuck you for getting it wrong. They were just like, like even people on YouTube, because we discussed it. I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. I thought it was YouTube reviewing it through what? We've been doing this for like two years, three years. It's like we had no idea. Yeah. So go ahead. I had no clue. Um, but other than that, though, like I think I did a video like a, a couple of months ago. I was a commentary one I did about guava juice, mm. um, and I was I was a little nervous to post it, not because I'm like, oh, it's gonna happen to me, but because it's like, even now I almost regret it in a little way, just because I think it's a little bit of a lazier video mm. because I didn't really make jokes about it as much. I just was it was just me thoroughly just venting about the dude mm. and it like if you don't know G guava juice roy purdy is the guy or not roy purdy <laughs> what? roy purdy's fucking cool oh, yeah. he's the dancing guy roy fabito is the guy's name mm. but he just like he he does little bright like videos that they're just they're fucking horrible they're so lazy i'm not gonna drag you into this <laughs> one but i don't like them they're terrible and youtube pushes them all the time and actually yeah we just learned from all the mystery brand scandal going on now roy did one of those fucking mystery brand videos and he's got like all kid audiences yeah too. very young kids so that's pretty shitty but at the time it was just it's I wasn't even. I didn't even come off as being in like a happy, fun mood, which is like I want those like commentary ones to kind of be goofing on stuff. Mm. It was just like me, an angry, unshowered kid in my room, just being like, "This fucking guy's stuff is so bad," you mm. know. So, so I, do you think instead of stress before, it's kind of like regret after then, or maybe a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Because well, also not regret like you shouldn't have done it. I'm yeah, not saying that. Just a little bit where I'm like in no way would I apologize for it or take it down, but just going forward, I would probably take a different approach to it again, mm -hmm. you know? Cause it's like, I was taking a big shot at a guy that like is not a t overly horrible, like predatory dude on the internet, like selling shit to kids, but it's yeah. just like, it's, it's lazy as fuck. It's terrible. And it's just me going like, how is this on top? Why? This mm. is shit content. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the thing is the, the, like mood behind even going for it is valid of like, I, I mean, you know, a big thing that I feel too is that like kids content needs to be more curated than what he was doing. And his videos were like that. Yeah. Uh, we're like, or not curated, you know? So I still, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I have a similar one to that too, where I haven't watched the video in a long time, but um, I do you remember the sprint commercials one I made. Yeah. The guy that switched I, sides. Yeah. I don't think I like <laughs> shit on him too much, but like, the weird thing is I don't think I – because I was way smaller of a YouTuber at the time. Yeah. Like, I think I had like 10,000 subscribers when I made that. Um, I don't think it's too angry. I need to go back and rewatch it. But like even now I see that and I'm like I know I was feeling that for like a fun goofing around thing. But like sprint commercials are not something to make an entire commentary video off of unless mm -hmm. I'm like fully parodying them. Yeah. So it's just like I see – yeah, I see that one similarly and it's like probably wasn't worth it doing <laughs> <laughs> What's your next Pregunta? Oh, shit. I shouldn't have put my phone back in my pocket. I okay. should have probably made sure that Pregunta is questioned before I just so <laughs> fucking cavalier. <laughs> also, um, I'm pretty sure it is from, I think from it Spanish is. classes. But, uh, yep. Um, one thing I was going to say, too, 
uh, it, it's surprisingly good technology for the, the iPhone X of the face ID stuff, but still to make it a requirement to like first before even using your passcode, using the face ID, mm -hmm. it's really inconvenient. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't tell people now they know your password. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking cut my face <laughs> off and use it. Um, I wonder if that wouldn't work. It would look too messy. Yeah. Don't try it. Um, <laughs> this one is from James Miller underscore YT. What video kickstarted your channels to take off? Uh, did you do anything differently or did one just finally pop? It's a good question. Mm. You should go first. I'm kind of, I don't know. Here's the subreddit mainly. Right? Well, so. Reddit helped me so much. And I, I have had videos that have boosted me along, you know, like, oh, that's a good couple of days. Oh, that's yeah. a couple of days. The first really big video for me was the uh, wipe it like it's hot one. Mm. But like I... I've been doing this for years, you know. I've been really I I almost used the word grind unironically. Oh man, rise and grind baby. I've been rising and grinding for years. Do you know how many mornings <laughs> I rose and then ground? I, it sounds horrible when you do it past <laughs> Um no, but I mean I've been doing it for years, you know, and it's it's the last year and a half has been the biggest growth year, but it's mm. like no, I've been fucking putting in the work and it's been It snowballs usually yeah, when you get bigger. I have been working on this for probably four and a half years like full time putting it in the time for it. Yeah. And it's the last year and a half. It's really started to kind of work out. So mm. that's it. Um, for mine, it was like doing in high school on what this channel is like, uh, or my channel, sorry, not this one, um, was like comedy sketches and stuff like Julian Smith inspired stuff. And then I really, the thing is that I feel really good about is I never jumped onto commentary cause it was like this big, huge thing where everyone was blowing up. It was like I saw H3 doing it, and I was like, holy shit, you can do that? I've been doing this to my friends, like just, you know, like explaining prank videos I think are fake and joking about them to my friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so I just really wanted to do it, and it wasn't the most popular content on my channel. So for a while, I was making like these commentary videos that were not getting as many views as the other stuff, which would be considered like a failure series, you know? Um, and then my dumbass like started making some that got bigger and then we met and I tried memes for a bit because I was like nothing was working and I've always made sketches and stuff so it was like an easy transition mm -hmm. and while we were doing that I had old videos blowing up with the algorithm commentary ones and I was just not thinking of making more mm -hmm. and then I made the first one I had made in a while was the Lele Pons one and that one blew up my channel and then kind of like stagnated for a while and then, um, honestly, recently, the Twitter gun girl video. Shit, can I say gun girl? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's just, we're, oh, wait, we're not, we're like not monetized yet. Times. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the fuck stuff. It's a YouTube will like, do specific video really? content stuff. Yeah. Um, that's why I have that bit where I whisper shit. Oh. Um, but um, it was that. And then also this last video I had is even more. It's always like with YouTube, it's you'll keep kind of grinding at it. And then, yeah, you'll have one that brings you up a little bit and then another one that brings you up a lot and then another one that brings you up a little bit. It's just like a lot of ones that do well and grow it. You know what I mean? It's not really one big one, I think, for our type of stuff. Yeah. But still, yeah, I don't know. That's a, you know, that's a really good point, too. I think a, a mistake a lot of people make, too, like if stuff doesn't start taking off right away, is they just don't change anything about mm. how they make the videos, like what the videos are and how they promote it, too. Yeah. Like they'll spend a year and they're like, I am doing... Lego set videos in my garage and I'm not posting it anywhere else and no one's watching. Yeah, it's, it's like, like find the Lego set subreddit and see if you can entertain them at all. Yeah, Reddit especially. Like I saw a couple of the Gus and Eddie things too and they were or like, yeah, for the questions and they were saying like, how do you like, what advice do you have to like get your stuff out there? Fucking put it on Reddit. Yeah. Put it on Reddit. I didn't have great luck with that though. Well, commentary so. stuff doesn't really work on Reddit. Yeah, as well, much, even when I was doing meme stuff, it wasn't really like working well. Like, yeah, it was, but okay. even even the ones that like didn't really work, you know, you get they still tenth got, link on a subreddit. Oh, maybe a few thousand traction. more views. Yeah, you, I yeah. say that, but I already had ten thousand subscribers doing it, so to me it was nothing. But to somebody starting out, it would be like new subs and everything like that to it. Yeah. Um, one thing I was almost like. <laughs> I was kind of giddy about was the plain potatoes video finally got some like that got some reddit traction i think it was like 14 on videos mm -hmm. that day but a commentary video of mine has never been posted and like reddit comments are really great and also really awful when they're about you yeah. because like sometimes they're like oh this is a great video but the thing is about reddit is the attitude going into it and i know this is somebody who uses it i'm a lurker on reddit i don't comment at all mm -hmm. is like when you're on reddit your brain expects stuff to be curated to you. 
So like if you see a video that's about say um, fucking like stickers or something, when you click on it, you're thinking this is has to be informative to me, and like this person, even if they're talking to their audience, I'm out. Yeah. Which like. When somebody posts something on YouTube and somebody links it to Reddit, they're not intending it straight to the Reddit audience. Yes. So Reddit will be straight up like cruel. Like, I don't know what this fucking intro bit was for the first two minutes. And it's like, it had nothing. It wasn't for you. Yeah. <laughs> so then when when there's something that you have that's straight, like just informative, and then you read the Reddit comments, you're like, oh, I survived that yeah. one. Because <laughs> there, it's because it's anonymous too. People will just be like, does anyone feel like Eddie's fucking eyebrows are too thick? And I'm like, ow. <laughs> Nobody would say <laughs> Yeah I don't know Yeah dude I don't know I I owe so much to like Reddit stuff And I do love it But the thing is like It really bothers me with, with like Well Comments can really like Fuck up a link too mm. Cause like a lot of my stuff When I do make it You know I'm not making it Specifically for Reddit But it does definitely Really play in like Do you think Reddit Will like this sketch Yeah You know And sometimes I'll think like Oh that's a hot topic right now That'll probably you know, Hopefully do well too Yeah and I still make it because it's funny and I want to make it and stuff. But it's like people turn on you so quick on Reddit, too. So if you have a link that's like rising up and maybe like th there are four comments in there and one of them's like, oh, dude, none of Gus's videos are funny. They fucking suck. It's like, OK, someone goes to the comment section. That's like the second comment. Now, yeah. And you yeah. can't do anything about it. Yeah, that's why Reddit's Reddit's an interesting one because it's not as a user of it. It's not representative of the entire whole. It's a specific group of people that would use Reddit that use it. Mm -hmm. But when you're reading the comments, it feels like it's like, this is full democracy. Yeah. These people, <laughs> this is what they think about you. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very hard place to read comments about yourself. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, like one time I saw, well, it, made, it was really nice to see one time I searched my name on Reddit. Because I was like, have any of my recent videos been posted? Mm -hmm. And apparently the teenagers subreddit likes me, which makes it, it's like nice where it's like, Hey boys and girls, how's it going? <laughs> um, but, uh, Hi young underage boys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, uh, it was like on unpopular opinions. And it was about reaction channels, not commentary. They didn't even uh -huh. call it commentary. And this is the biggest dumb fucking argument that I see. Cause we both do commentary now mm -hmm. where people try and always, if they're a fan of the person you're talking about, they try and boil down your content to being like, will you just fucking react to somebody's shit? It's like, no, I wrote a script. I had an, like an opinion and my own input that I put throughout the entire video. I had original intros and outros and jokes throughout the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And then they boil it down to be like, well, you're just reacting to this person and that's all you do. So it was an unpopular opinion that was like, they used me as a prime example because they were a fan of you where yeah. they were like, we're like, Gus will make really great sketches. And uh, Eddie Burbeck seems like he might. It was like something like he seems like an OK guy. But really, all he does is react to people and shit on them. Oh, I hate that. And it was like I read that and I was like, why did I search my fucking name on Reddit? <laughs> this is so stupid. IDK, bro. I always hate when people try to boil commentary down to that. Because yeah. it's just like it's, that's all you do. And it's like, it's like look you, up. You like, wouldn't exist. You yeah. exist with it's like well we also make sketches and have a podcast. That's the thing. Do it's, some yeah. fucking research. And even just like Twitter, Twitter videos we tweet out, like jokes we tweet out. It's um, we're constantly putting content out there that isn't commentary. And yeah. It's like oh that's all your channel is. <laughs> it's like you did no research. Congratulations. Yeah, we had a lot of just lower opinions of like people on the line in the last yeah. month. It's the, been nuts. The toxic comments that we've seen is I, for, for me specifically from the last video is just like, just beating me down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not personally about me of just like seeing that those people exist. You're like, Oh fuck. Come on, man. Yeah, no, I know I'm going to get that on the next one. That <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah. well, t well just the small teaser is like this. The, there'll be a juicy one coming on Gus's channel, boys. There'll be a juicy and one. Gals. It's going to be a shit show in the comments. Just unusable, honestly. Mm, I'm not yeah. even going to try to patrol him, though. I'm See, just going to say fucking That's dope. the thing is I expected to be rated with dislikes for my video. Because, you, I mean, they're similar situations. That's only why I'm bringing mine up mm -hmm. now. It still hurts to see the dislikes the way they are. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just because new people will come and they'll be like, oh, maybe this is controversial. And it's like, it wasn't, though. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't controversial. There's just shitty people in the world, yeah. you know? That's what, like, it didn't, like, bother me, like, lowering views of humanity. But there were so many stupid comments off of my office video oh um, yeah holy <laughs> shit didn't you say there was a lot of dislikes on dude, that because people like, took it seriously 
near 8,000 dislikes on it. Holy shit. How many likes are there? Um, well, there's still a lot of likes, but the thing is, like, once past the initial, like, oh, all my subscribers saw it, it was getting recommended to people. So they're like, who's this fucking asshole saying The Office is a bad show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a joke. I, it, like, the whole video was me making fun of obvious jokes on The Office, like, they're looking at the camera every time. That's what pisses me off about the algorithm, because they were showing it to, like, diehard fans of The Office, and that's the same thing as after getting rated for dislikes. Recently, last week, I could tell from comments that people were like, oh, or YouTube was going like, oh, okay, so they're watching compilations of this guy, and this dude made a commentary video on this guy. They're going to love this video. Yeah. It's like, no, <laughs> that's the worst people to show it to. You know what I love, too, about the Office one is I have seven points about it where I go, because it's like a five-minute video. Yeah, yeah. And I go list by list, and it's so painfully Dude, obvious. it's so fucking clear. So clear. And it's like one of the things that I said why The Office is a terrible show is that Pam's baby is ugly. Yeah. That was one of the yeah. points. Which did you I get do, any dumb comments about I do that? believe that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I did. And there were a number of people. I almost made a video about it, but then too much time went by. But there were a number of people that were like, you are so dumb. Let me show you <laughs> item by item why you're wrong. And so they watched the full video and still were like, he doesn't Dude, get it. <laughs> those are my favorite is when people will watch the whole thing and misinterpret a whole video and be like, here is why you are a fucking idiot and you missed the joke. <laughs> and it's like, what? Ah, oh, God damn. I don't know. Oh, I was going to say one thing earlier, uh, a doxing thing that really bothered me is like, so someone just tweeted at me and they had a, an, a Google Maps screenshot of my old house. No one lives there. Don't fucking go there. But my own house still in my hometown. So probably I know somebody that lives there now. And it was like, I don't know how they found it. They found my house on Street View and Maps and stuff. And they tweeted me two pictures. And they're like, hey, Gus, found your old house. Hi. And I'm just like, don't <sighs> do it. Guys, quick thing for the future of us doing videos. Don't attempt to like show us that you found us. And also I'll just say it before it happens. Never fucking come to one of our houses. Never do that. Never. And I know like literally almost all of you are listening. Like, yeah, those people are dumbasses. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I listen to other YouTubers and other famous people. Not, I'm not putting us in the same category. I'm famous. real celebrities. <laughs> and then us, yeah. um, where, uh, I've listened to other YouTubers where it's like, wow. Yeah. I can't fucking believe people did that. So if you're listening, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person that's listening and going, well, sometimes maybe. And it's like, no, yeah. no, nev never, not once. Never, never, never fucking ever. Like you could come up to me. If you see me in a McDonald's sitting alone, crying with a burger bite in my mouth, come say oh, hi. In public, always say hi. Always. Especially if you're like, oh, I've had some people tweet like, oh, yeah, I saw you with your family. And it's like. If you see me with my family, it's only going to make me look cool in front of my dad. <laughs> it will, I want my dad to think I'm cool. <laughs> so always come up in public. Yes. But, but if you come to my house, I won't even try to laugh it off. Like, he okay, won't even call the cops. I I'm just kidding. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Pull the plastic revolver out. We ain't dialing 911 here. Do you see this sign? <laughs> I won't even try to like laughingly be like, okay, like I'm going to fucking pepper spray you if you come to my door. <laughs> I swear to God, that's an honest threat. Stay the fuck away from my house. But I don't get that too. Is like someone, they tweet at me too. And like, were they joking? Maybe, you know, like, I don't hey, know. You found your old house. It's like, Hey, fuck you. I got to report the tweet. Dumbass. Like yeah. I know people in my town. Don't do that. Yeah. That's, I don't know what the fun is there. If it's just like kind of fucking with you, it would have to be fucking with you. Cause nobody's like, Hey, I found like, nobody's really excited about finding it unless they're a kid and our audiences aren't that young. Usually yeah. but maybe, I mean, I'm sure there are like a couple of kids that watch our stuff. Yeah. That short, podcast name should be a couple of kids. A couple, just a couple of kids, just a couple of kids. Four kids by kids. Kid <laughs> tested, mom approved. Hey guys, just a couple of kids here. <laughs> Let's talk about why teachers are bad. Err. That sounded like a Drew bit coming out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I'll find another. Check this out. Pregunta. Whoa, right? oh, dude. That's Spanish for question. I don't think you knew that. I didn't know that. I. <laughs> Both of those noises, I feel like I'm just picturing somebody driving, listening to the podcast, and hearing, uh, uh. really loud. Yeah. <laughs> if you're driving, don't swerve off the road. Uh. Um, I didn't like that either. <laughs> um, I have a couple, but I'm not sure which. Uh, Choose the second one. 
that we already kind of talked about that. Um, what? Are, oh, this is a good one. What are some really good jokes or ideas you've seen that made you think, damn, why the hell didn't I think oh, of that? That's such a good one. Yeah. So you take that one first. I saw one of this guy that was like, he went to a library and it was, it seemed like it wasn't faked. If it was faked, it was really good. Mm. But he went to a library and it was called eating the loudest foods I could think of in the library. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, just like, and totally not even being super obnoxious about it. Just like fully focused in reading books and stuff. And then pulling like a whole head of like iceberg lettuce <laughs> on and just biting into it. And That's like so watching people be like, what are you fucking doing? <laughs> just like Lay's potato chips and stuff. I was like, damn it, that would have been so easy. Like, mm. that's great. There's some of those small ones. Or there's some small ones especially that, like, our friends will do. Like, there's, I, it kills me every time, and he did it again recently. When Drew, Drew Gooden, in, or sorry, Drew Gordon, now according <laughs> to PewDiePie, which was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I don't know why. Why is it so funny when your friends, like, have a very small bad thing happen to them? You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, just, it's just fucking hilarious. It's like when Ian Kung, PewDiePie did it to Ian Kung, too. He called him Evan Coon. <laughs> <laughs> So his shout out. <laughs> so Drew Gordon um, did a video where, uh, in part of it, he mouthed along like pretending to be in an audition. He mouthed along to one of El Mills's videos, mm -hmm. and just seeing Drew like put on the face of El Mills and mouth her words out of his mouth yeah. was just such a funny bit where I was like, how the fuck have I not seen other people do like a lip sync to like a girl where they're just talking like them? Yeah. It was just so funny. It kills me every time I see it. Yeah. I love that shit. Um, there's, I mean, I'm sure there are a ton of good jokes or ideas. I mean, there's probably more for you cause you do the sketches like way more. Yeah, I, I definitely remember having that feeling dozens of times. Yeah. I can't come up with any examples right now, but the the Lettuce Library was the most recent one. Mm. Where I'm like, God damn it. And it's even, it's the worst part. Like for me, the biggest gift in the world is when I think of an idea that I was like, three things. I know it's funny. Mm. I know Reddit's going to like it. And I know it's just going to be easy to shoot. Like, oh my God, this is a one take joke I can do. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Reddit's going to like it. And it's funny. Okay. And I see someone else come up with one, and I'm like, God damn it, I could have come yeah, up with that. Yeah. I don't know. We sound like grumpy old men. <laughs> That's what we are coming back. Um, it was so positive at the end of the last episode, of the Christmas episode. Christmas changed us. <laughs> um, oh, this is one that I just wanted to quickly answer. What, uh, what made you decide on the order of your names on the podcast? When Gus and I started doing stuff together, I told you first. I was like, Gus and Eddie sounds better. Not even a debate. Uh, I, wait, Italian. I mean, sorry for the bit. Eddie and Gus sounds w way better. Ah, you got but me. no, yeah, I, I think um, with my name specifically, it doesn't sound good before and. It's very choppy with the word and because mm -hmm. it's like uh, Eddie and Gus. You Eddie know what I mean? There, it sounds like the same word kind of twice. It's the DG, de yeah, Gus, and Eddie just, and de Gus. It doesn't sound right. So yeah, it was instantly when we started, I was like, that one sounds better. Um, all right. There, I mean, are you looking at questions now too? Yeah, I got some here too. All right, let's hear one. <laughs> this is, uh, oh fuck, I just answered that. Oh, here's a real quickie, an unironic answer because I keep tweeting about my favorite episode of The Office and mm -hmm. I just make shit up. Um, I'm totally ripping off the Doug episodes thing you showed me. Um, what's your favorite episode of The Office? Um, at Macy Winstent. Fuck, I feel like I had this answer already prepped and now I don't remember it. Um, I like stress relief part one where it's a fire in the intro. That's great. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, fuck, I can't really. Uh, I mean, one of my favorites definitely is the dinner party episode. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's a fucking classic, man. It's, it's like every moment of that one is hilarious. And again, I know everyone fucking like everything about the office is over talked about, but the the over talked about blooper of pushing the plasma screen in. Yeah, it's that fucking noise. You hear that? Yeah. I swear to God, when it started, I was like, "Is that my stomach?" It definitely was. Yeah, I did Jesus. not feel it. What the like fuck? A, was it was like a mountain lion or it something. It was just I. I heard like a whoa. That was a good impression I did. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Um, there was a. I didn't mean that. That was just for the. Bit. <laughs> Thanks. Um, was it a fucking neighbor? What what I happened? Know. Sorry, dropping so many f bombs. Shoot. Darn it. Dang it. You have any weird uh, YouTube family stuff when you were back? Uh, for Christmas, like, uh, what do you mean, like people? Just like mad people. At me? Was it just that? Like, I mean, people commenting on stuff because I had a really positive one happen. Yeah, that's most of it. It's just people stop 
I'm going to say the F word sometimes. What was your positive one? It was really nice. I just uh, went into my, my, one of my uncles that I have known, like he goes, they go on like every vacation with us. So yeah. all of our life. So I know him really well. Um, I guess he had just never looked into it. And in between the last time me seeing him and uh, Christmas, there was Thanksgiving because mm-hmm. I was back for the whole thing. Um, he just came up to me. He's like, Eddie, I watched pretty much every video of yours. He's like, because he was discovering commentary for the first time. And yeah. I think people, it's like some people like comment. It's commentary is like either you like it or you don't usually, you mm-hmm. know, like you're really into it or you're not. Um, and he, w- I guess he just like had the bug for it in his brain. He's just like, those are so great. And he started just listing off shit. I had re- reacted to yeah. cause that's all I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> and like, he was just so fucking nice about it where I didn't even know how to process it where I was like, Oh man, I would have thought you wouldn't like these at all, but he seemed to really like them a lot. Yeah, which is nice to see that somebody uh, not from our generation can enjoy commentary stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. I think it's it, it has the potential to be really accessible to people too, because even if they don't understand fully, like you're kind of their guide. Like, yeah, that was the nice look. thing that my my dad would talk about. He's like he would say like I don't really know what you're talking about, but you get like the fact that you're talking about it was really enough to give you the info for mm-hmm. it, which is it something they're saying directly to me, but is not what I started at all, I want to say. Yeah. Um, Here's a banger. At Yuli J asks, what are the most important lessons you learned from making mistakes, and how have you grown, both personally and in YouTube? You want to hit that up first? Just because I talked a lot. Yeah, second. sure. I think a, a mistake I made early YouTube was I was trying to post, like, every day or every other day, mm-hmm. like, when I was really growing and stuff, and I was... Like, my happiness was so dependent on, like... I had to come up with a fucking video every day. Yeah, and I wasn't even doing... Like torture. Yeah, and it wasn't even me doing, like, vlogs or a preset thing. I was like, okay, what's a brand new joke and sketch that I can make every day? Yeah. It killed me. So, don't do that shit. I don't know about other personal mistake stuff, though. I think the biggest one um, is when you're really small and starting out, I will say it is very bizarre to start having strangers comment about your stuff. Yeah. Because it's like you're putting yourself out there, and what it feels like is people are trying to tear you down, Mm -hmm. which I never is something that I held on to a long time. I started creating content when I was like, fuck it. I mean, like, for the internet when I was, like, 14 maybe. Or I did it back, like, you know, when I was 10, you're posting YouTube videos, but I mean actually, like, trying to gain – or starting to gain traction on stuff. Yeah. So I would say if you're getting into making content or you're starting to blow up doing it, like – There are a ton of comments that aren't valid, but like people aren't usually out to get you when you're starting out and when they give criticism. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the times I see um, some YouTubers get so big that they have this ego that they can't do anything wrong. Um, And it's like if you get called out by somebody on something, you Mm -hmm. need to reflect and look look at yourself and look what you've done. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean always apologize for stuff that you do or anything like that. Yeah. But I see a lot of people on the Internet making the mistake of. Being like, well, it's this is my view, so I'm just right. Like, I have for for I don't want to get into specifics for anything, but mm-hmm. like for specific YouTube stuff, like bigger people who get called out on stuff should be cooler more and realize when they do something wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, even with like this this fucking rice gum, like I didn't see his uh, second apology video. Apparently, no. he kind of like attacks H3 and stuff, but it's like rice gum doesn't have the fucking capacity in his head <laughs> to just be like, oh. Maybe I do have a kid audience and maybe I am manipulating them and maybe I am hurting their brains. He just goes, why is everyone mad at me? Must be some reason of of their own. And it's like, like, bro, I'm just hanging here, dude. I'm just making my shit. That was the fucking bizarre thing about it was in his apology when he was like, yo, it was no big deal. I just didn't like my manager brought it to me. I didn't think. And it's like, if you can't think and you make kids content. Yeah. Delete your channel. Yeah. I'm fully, if this ever reaches Rice Gum or Jake Paul or use this for any fucking kids creator, <laughs> if you did something with sponsorships or anything that were purposely broadcasted to kids and you didn't think, stop what you're doing. End it now. Mm. Not life. I yeah. mean your channel. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stress that. <laughs> but it's just like if you if you don't, if you're not mature enough to do it, you shouldn't be making content for kids. Yeah, it's that's true. plain and simple that I don't know how the fuck I turned that question into that, but that's true. It really do be like that. It some sometimes it sometimes do, and then most of the time it really always do. I had a stretch sophomore year of college where it be like that very a lot of the time. Though, mm, I thing. did. I had a couple of weeks last year where it didn't be like that. Yeah, but then it turned out that it did be like that the whole time. 
Does it always be like that though? Or is I it... think so. I think so. Okay. My dad was saying when he was coming up that it it had been like that for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> that one specifically got me. That was really funny. <laughs> um, uh, who is this? At K. Schwan asks, what was your favorite movie of 2018? I would say that came out in 2018. Uh, you can guess mine. I've already I know what yours about is. It. It's Into the Spider-Verse. I don't... Here's the thing. I want to say just a quick disclaimer. I've had a lot of people on the internet, when you share something that you like, they love to be like, well, it fucking sucked. Like, yep. I do care about your opinion, but if you're just going to be like, well, what you like is garbage. Like, we're not having a discussion. Yeah. Fuck you. I fucking loved Into the Spider-Verse so much. Seen it four times. Wow. I fucking love that movie. And my brother loves that movie, and we were back for a break, so it was like multiple times we got to go see it together, just like we were be bored and then when we went to the cabin together mm-hmm. we got to have all my friends hometown friends and you see it it was just like i fucking love that movie so much it's, oh, it's so great. well made i love it I, I love the movie too you brought me to see it too and i you know i already don't care about superhero stuff mm-hmm. for the most part and this is so different like yeah. fucking incredible this is probably in my top three movies i saw this year though dude yeah it's so fucking good so good What's um, yours? Mine's definitely a quiet place, though. I oh, love okay. a quiet place I still haven't so seen it. much. It just—it's so exciting when you can see comedians branch out into like serious other genres and stuff, and especially like Jordan Peele doing Get Out was like, oh my god, yes! Yeah. I can't wait to see us. Or it, I think it's, it's just so—it's uh, the Jordan Peele one was so surprising mm-hmm. because like Krasinski, I could see it. Just like Peele was so focused on like him and uh, him and Keegan Michael Key, like they made sketches all the time you know what i mean they did comedy and like krasinski was an actor yeah who was also very funny but like i was so surprised where it's like the guy's brain that made so many hilarious fucking sketches can also make get out and then us look super fucked up yeah it's crazy oh i just love it so much and just again i say it all the time we are in a horror a movie renaissance right now and it's so exciting Mm. so much good horror shit comes out every year did you see bird box I did not see Bird Box. I didn't see it either. I almost it's very don't want polarizing. to. Yeah. Do you think Netflix, like, fuck, did some fucked up shit with memes on the I internet? I think they did. Yeah. Wouldn't it, put it past them. It was. This is full like conspiracy theory. Yeah. Don't trust it all. But like, I believe the people saying that Netflix kind of you know curated memes and stuff because it was the day after Christmas. Who the fuck was watching Bird Box on Christmas Day? Yeah. Like I'm sure some people did because they opened up Netflix at the end of the night and they wanted to watch it. But like. It exploded the day after Christmas. That mm-hmm. doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. And usually, like, when when Netflix will, like, push something a lot, people don't really watch it that much. Yeah, if there's a look at this, it's like, yeah. fuck you, that's not good. Bring yeah. back the star system, bitch. Wait, what is the star system? Or the uh, percentage, or, oh, wait, you remember? Oh, oh, the star, I the thought stars. I was thinking of a piece of content. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Dude. Fuck that whole yeah, thing. It's and then dumb. You remember toward the end of the star system where the, they were like, no, stars have always never been a rating thing. It's just like how good it is for you. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So turn it into a real star system. Yeah. Here's a good one. <laughs> Here's a good one. It's funny. It just it says, at Powerful Paper asks, I saw my mom in the bathroom the other day and I asked what she was doing. She said she was peeing. What do I do? Find a new legal guardian. You can't pee during January. And also, it's the same thing, like I said, with kids content. If you pee in January and think you can raise a kid, sorry, done. Not going to happen. Say bye-bye to your child. Really no more like kid. That. It's so fucking simple. All we're asking is for you to not pee for a month. We're not even asking you to do something. We're asking you to not do we're something. We're asking you to not do something, which is easier than doing something. Yeah. If I asked you not to pee, well, I mean, one thing is there's also a question. We should find the person, but they said, like, what is February? Obviously, February is don't poop February. Yeah. It's it's the next step. Yeah. Okay? So when we're asking you to not do something, it's way fucking easier than doing it. Mm-hmm. You don't even... So, okay. Well, oh, it's so hard to not go to the bathroom and sit there on yeah. your phone for a while and then wipe and then flush. Just or, sit down. You don't yeah. even have to pee. You that can still always sit down. peeing, by the way, not pooping. Oh. yeah. To sit, you're sitting down and peeing and... And wiping and flushing. You're wiping your... My penis. I Sorry, my, my <laughs> weed. <laughs> oh, fuck. My chair broke a little bit. I was proud of that joke I wrote. I don't even remember that. What are you that was the about? wiping my penis from part 10 stuff. You probably oh, just right. thought of it on your own, though. Um, let me see here. There's a lot of people talking about you standing on chairs. I really hope you haven't been doing that when I was I have. Playing. I haven't done it. Well, 
I have not. I didn't do it at home. That's what I'm saying. Oh, but you, but you did give me one free pass at the in the comment section of the Plain Potatoes video. Okay. So even though I have I have not been <laughs> staying on chairs at home. Yep. For sure. Okay. You can ask Tony. You can ask. Hold on. Are you? Hey, are you Siri? texting to what? Text Tony and say if Gus asks about standing on chairs, tell him that I didn't stand on chairs. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm gonna. St- Your message to Tony says if Gus asks about standing on chairs, tell him that one I second. didn't stand on chairs. Ready to send it? Send. Thank you, Siri. Your message to Tony says thank. Ready to send it? Cancel. Okay. So ask Tony or ask anyone in my family. And surprisingly, you only have Tony's number. I haven't been standing on chairs, Gus. Not only did you just do that in front of me, where I know you just had Tony do say what in front of you. Well, who, you told what? Tony to say that I didn't know you were standing on chairs. Not only did you do that in front of me. I was having me, a conversation with Siri. I don't know if you, you were on a hot mic. I don't know if you were eavesdropping. I heard it all live. It's in room my, temperature. It's a room temperature mic. You proud of that, Joe? No, but I'm trying to get out of this situation. So <laughs> you gotta run these things past me, you know. <laughs> Stick to the fucking script. <laughs> <laughs> she just looked down, and it's just full sheets of paper <laughs> lined up in like eight groups, like little receipt paper <laughs> coming up. Um, here's a good question. Uh, at Skeleman asks, "What movies were you fellas most disappointed in recently?" P.S. Love ya. Oh shit! I know there's. De- Did he wink? Was that there's what you're doing? There's a kiss wink. So- oh, is there a kiss wink? Yeah. There's a heart coming out of his mouth. I didn't even know that was... An, okay, stop doing that, because that's not the emoji. Oh, I forgot to wink this episode. <laughs> that thing that... Did you remember the update I told you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll tell everyone. Just <laughs> Gus mentioned in the Sam Basher episode that he'd been secretly winking once at the camera the entire time, but he didn't tell Tony, so most likely... Every time Gus winked, he wasn't talking, which means Tony's had the camera not on Gus, which means probably most of the winks he ever did didn't make it to the final episode of the podcast. It doesn't count. It's not part of it. Yes, it does. (laughs) It counts only in your head. That's all that matters. But what was... Oh, the disappointment movie. Um... Jurassic World was really bad, but I didn't really expect much of it after yeah. Jurassic World 2. I actually, at the time, initially liked Jurassic World a lot. And then, like, after thinking about it, liked it less and less as time went on. Yeah. Um, I know there's, like, one or two that came out that I was, like, really disappointed in. I got my big-ass bang and act answer. Action point. Oh, yeah. Did we Fuck already talk about that on the that. podcast? No, I, w- I might still do it, but I, w- I don't remember if we did, but I might still do it. I was going to do a whole commentary video about how disappointing it was yeah it just in every way it breaks your heart if you're a jackass fan it's yeah it's just it's a movie that you can tell is made by people that don't make movies that's really yeah. like it's, I'm sh- i i don't understand how they fucked that up so bad though like who wrote it i don't know is the thing and what bothers me is like you have johnny knoxville who Everybody loves Johnny Knoxville, you know, and you even got Chris Pontius, another jackass guy. It's like, oh, shit, Pontius is in a movie now, too. Yeah. It is a movie about a 1970s water park that it's a true story. It existed, and the rules and regulations were so bad that kids would die there all the time. And you have Johnny Knoxville doing his own stunt at this dangerous water park from the 70s. How do you fuck that up? You know what it was is it felt like going into it they had the attitude of like making the fun movie, but Mm -hmm. then it was based on real stuff where like it could have still been the fun movie, but if they grounded it more, but for people who didn't see the movie, it was just like a collection of like not that great bits that were like strung together as a movie. And what bothered me too is like, if you saw any ads for action point, I guarantee you probably saw like Johnny Knoxville getting launched through the barn and going off the Alpine slide. I was like, okay, what big stunts are they going to save for the movie? None. No I saw ones, yeah. every stunt in the ads. Yeah. Other than like maybe tiny ones. Yeah. Tiny that ones. Like, yeah. Tiny Ugh. little ones, little, little, little baby ones. ones, little baby stunts. Johnny just went, Ow. Johnny went, can I get one? Circular small band aid, please. Oh, I want it to be peanuts themed. I would like a Lucy themed peanuts band aid on my owl. What is that act? What is that voice you're doing? Is that Knoxville? Is Johnny Knoxville. It sounds a little bit like Stephen Hawking or something. Stephen like Hawking. Because <laughs> it's got that weird Stephen like. Stephen Hawking. Yeah. So what are you saying? What? That sounded so <laughs> similar to what you just did. Hi, I'm Stephen Hawking. Welcome to Jackass. Oh, no. That would be the weirdest fucking combination of things. I'm going to drive my 
chair into a little kiddie pool <laughs> so it shorts out. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we don't need a black Maybe hole. go to another question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuck. Uh, 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 uh. Um, all right, I got I scrolled past some questions. Okay. I don't know if I've been reading the names out anymore. I don't remember. That's okay. Um, w- uh, we already talked about movies a little bit. Um, how long uh, did each of you guys, this is a quick one, make videos on and content before you started blowing up? I've been making content for about a year and a half now, and I'm not sure if I need to change my creative direction. Um, also, Gus, stop tweeting about The Office at 2 a.m. I did not <laughs> I did not see that part of the tweet before. That's from, um, uh, is it not, is that supposed to be not Janet? Parker Broski is his, like, uh, display name okay. um just the short answer because i don't we've talked about this so many times on the podcast is um th- i think everyone that makes stuff like content made a lot when they were kids or like some form of it mm-hmm. youtube like taking it seriously we both did it for years and if you've been doing it for a year and a half and you have no traction i would say if you can change your creative direction to where it's still what you believe is what you want to make, then do that. Yeah. But don't compromise what you want to do just because it's not working. And then it's like, what are your goals? Do you want to do it as a job? Because then will the, is that doing well on YouTube? Yeah. It's a whole thing. I, I, we talk so much about like advice for it, but it really, it's really just like you just fucking try shit until it works. And anybody's advice, ours included, you got to take it with a grain of salt because everybody's situation is different, especially on YouTube. There's no traditional format, you know? Yeah. People could blow up by putting their shit on LinkedIn for all I know. You know, yeah. I don't fucking know, but you got to figure it out. Listen, listen to general advice and then kind of choose from there. Yeah. You know, it's one thing that does bother me what? a little bit, and I hope this doesn't sound really self-righteous. Um, we had kind of talked about this before. It's when it's whenever like YouTube makes an announcement or a change, you know, like, Oh, where it could kind of like hurt the community and stuff like it's shitty. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of an example, like when, you know, the, the music copyright stuff happens, you know, yeah. where it's kind of out of control or, or like they, the, the 10 minutes thing from years ago about the, the, the 10 length. minutes thing. Yeah. Like the video length affecting how much money you make. Oh yeah. Or like, like the, kill the animators. Exactly. Like killing the animator stuff or like saying like bumping up their monetization requirements, you know, like, and then I, I see it almost every time. Like if I talk about it in a video or like if it's a community thing, people say the same comment and they go like, see, this is the kind of stuff that's keeping me from making a channel because it discourages me. Yeah. You were, you weren't going to make that channel. Yeah. If that's all it took, you know, yeah, I don't, I, again, the main, the main, oh God, I'm sorry. I forgive you. <laughs> the main, yeah. Big piece of advice along with that is like, if you're doing YouTube specifically to become famous or to make a lot of money, you are not doing it for the right reasons. It seems like they're looking for an excuse to be like, Oh, thank you. That's why I can't do it. It's yeah, like, no, yeah. I mean, I get it. It's, it's kind of discouraging going in too. And again, you know, I'm not some American hero here for like the first year I was making videos. I couldn't make a single goddamn sense mm. cause I wrecked my ad sense when I was like a freshman in high school, clicking on my own ads at different computers in the school library. <laughs> yeah. So I was just banned from it. And like I, my channel started growing. I wasn't even making money on it off of it. I clearly wanted to cause I was broke as shit college kid. Yeah. I was washing dishes, doing my homework. Not at all. And then just making videos. I was going to say, especially after our, our two podcasts ago yeah. episode, you can't be like, doing no, my homework, doing do homework. things. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Is there a question that's not about YouTube? Um, we got a couple Vimeo ones here in the chat. Fucking hell, dude. <laughs> I, I have gotten so much damn mileage out of Vimeo jokes. It's not even funny. The jokes being not funny, that is. Is that the type of mileage where you like run the wheels and it's not really going anywhere? Yes. Okay. We cool. are running on the rims. <laughs> <laughs> This is a spit of silence. I thought you had a question. <laughs> I thought I did too. Well, um, all right. Sometimes silence is good, boys and girls. Silence is golden. Duct tape is silver. Put that on a graphic tee and sell it at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the beer shirt. <laughs> mm. Too soon. Too soon. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, You guys ever start a sentence with you guys ever and not have a bit to finish it? Because that's what I just did. <laughs> usually I have, I usually I'll fill in the blanks, but I really didn't have anything there. 
Oh my God! Wow, I'm just going. Uh, the, th- the thing is, all these questions are the same ones, though. You yeah, know, it's YouTube all about, ones. It's, it's all YouTube ones. I would say, yeah, guys, for the questions for the uh, other episodes, like you can still have YouTube questions, but they, like we have talked so much about starting out on YouTube. Like I don't have anything else to say. Mm-hmm. You I, know what? In I, general, I don't. Podcast is over for good. All right, see so you guys. No, what time are we at? That would be, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be terrible. We're at an hour ten. We'll go a little longer. Okay. Slick. Um, but yeah, guys, just I mean, ask it about anything. We'll be willing to talk about it. Ask me anything. AMA. I, I have one f- for you that was influenced by one of these questions, so I'll read their name out loud. Sure thing. Um, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> it's from um, Calf. Uh, what? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. Like I was Calf. Calf. Oh. Um, what are What are your favorite childhood films? And I will adjust Ooh. it by saying, was there something as a kid that you were like absolutely obsessed with? Well, the, my first thing that I was super obsessed with was when I was in preschool and kindergarten, there was this movie called Dinosaurs! Exclamation, uh, exclamation point, sorry. Talking about Disney's Dinosaurs? No, it was not Disney's Dinosaurs. It was called, like, Dinosaurs! Exclamation point. It was a straight-to-VHS thing, and it was this weird-as-shit thing with Fred Savage as a kid. What the like, fuck? He was, like, the main character, and it was, like, this kid that was like, my science project's due on Wednesday. What do I do it on? And he was just in his room, and he's like, Dinosaurs, and that's him learning about dinosaurs. So there's some live action of Fred Savage doing shit, and then the rest is claymation cartoon dinosaurs, and then like claymation students like yelling at the teacher. Oh. Dude, it's the weirdest thing ever. There was so much weird straight to VHS shit that were when we were kids. Like, yeah, my one of the first things I was obsessed with was. Do you ever? I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast or not, but do you ever watch Timmy the Tooth? Timmy the Tooth. I know the name. I don't know what that Look is, Look up though. a picture of Timmy the Tooth Timmy right the now. Timmy the Tooth? For you, the people that don't know, I'm pretty sure they were straight to library, like VHSs. Straight for, to library? Yeah, like they would only sell, like they would only have them for rent at the library. That's I would never see them at Hollywood tier. Video or anything like that. Wow. It um, looks gruesome. But yeah, they were like educational like lesson videos about this tooth called Timmy the Tooth. And like his dog, I think, was a toothbrush. Um, and it was just, it was like a fun, I fucking, I think because of this show, I still love puppets and stuff. And uh, I was fucking obsessed with it. Really? It's like we'd go to the library and get like a book and then, uh, and then like rent a Timmy the Tooth tape, and even the one I had seen before. Same one with that, what was it? The Planes with the Faces? One of them's a JJ meme JJ the Jet Plane. That's it. Boom. That guy was just fucking buzzing around town like this. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like it though. <laughs> they used the, what, the, the, uh, the woman plane as a meme now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Dude, I... I I was saying for years, JJ the jet plane is going to be a meme. I want it to take off. I want Timmy the tooth to take off, because he's a jet plane. I want Timmy the tooth to to fl- to floss. Am I right, fellas? Can we all do the floss? Can we ninja break that Sitting record? Down. Did you see that clip, dude? Yeah, it was terrible. It's uh, like <sighs> we don't even talk about current events shit, really. But that was fucking horrible. Ninja yeah. trying to floss on New Year's. It's Eve. just like sometimes you see people do stuff on TV. And it's like, I know you have the knowledge that this will not go over well with people. Mm -hmm. So why did you still do it? I can't tell if it's better that he never (laughs) wavered from his energy levels at all or if it's worse. Because the whole time, no one was doing the floss. I think it would be better. Because we're in the age of, like, internet creators are realistic and they're honest with people. So, you know, if it was, like, Ryan Seacrest, which I think he was even in that clip... Um, if he was doing it, I'd be like, keep playing through it, Ryan. Like yeah. you're a trooper. But with Ninja, he should have just been like, all right, no one's doing it and turn around. That's fine. But to show clips of people not doing it in front of him and him being like, come on, nobody's dancing. Yeah. That was kind of the cameraman throwing him under the bus. There. Yeah, it really was. The wide <laughs> shot was so just bad. Him, by the way, you at home, no one's doing it. <laughs> Cause they had close-ups of people doing it and they're yeah. like, all right. Well, then let's just check the white and show it. It's not happening. <laughs> and it was raining in his yeah. floppy pink hair. Dude, really. it's not. Terrible situation. It's red hair, so get it right. But Sorry. Salmon. Fuchsia. Palmer. I don't know why. It's it, whatever the, uh, like, AC shut off, too, yeah. <laughs> right when you said salmon, so it was really jarring. <laughs> salmon. Um, I don't know, though. <laughs> you know? Oh, I shouldn't talk about this. Never mind. Now I want to hear it. Yeah. No, it was... It was a little R. Kelly related. I don't really want to talk about it. No, we'll, we'll, oh, let's just say we'll wait for that discussion. We'll wait for that. We'll wait for that discussion. We'll wait. After this, we'll give a little toot toot. Give, toot, give one of your classic winks to the camera right now. All right, now the other one. Now you, you're not doing it right. If for our audio listeners, Gus is like pushing his eyelids like muscles close together, but he's not finishing the wink, and I know he can do it. 
What are you? What is that? Why are you make? Oh, that's not a good noise. For that. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think Ninja got paid to do that, though? A lot. Do you think he made six figures doing that? I doubt it. What was it though? Was it a Twitch stream? Was it Twitch specific? I think he just appeared as like a notable person for the year. And I thought he was hosting some graphics. Was he? Like I don't full know. time? Because I thought that was like a hosting room where like him and Dr. Lupo were and something else. I don't know if it was because I think Twitch advertised it. So I'm not sure mm. if he, I don't know enough to, to guess on how much money he made because I don't know what his job was doing it. What if he was making live donations and that was <laughs> off a commission? It was live donations of the people shitting themselves <laughs> in Times Square and they just throw <laughs> coins up at him. Did you he, did you read that thing on Reddit? What? Where it's like those people stand there for 12 hours and they can't move because they lose their spot. So most of them wear adult diapers. This is what I read on Reddit. So most of I don't believe that. Well, it's like, what are you going to do? Google, I actually would like to know. Yeah. Because the thing is, if you're standing there for 12 hours, what are you going to do? Not pee for an entire month? I'm just going to look I'm just gonna look <laughs> at Times Square adult diapers. Okay. You're just going to get a picture of like one of the entertainers pretending to be a big old baby. Mm. First result, New York Post. Adult diapers and cold weather didn't stop these people from welcoming 2018. I'm so proud when people don't let adult diapers stop them from doing something. <laughs> <laughs> what a great species we are that we didn't let it shitting ourselves as adults to stop us from standing this is why we decided to evolve <laughs> uh, when the ball dropped at midnight the mercury had plummeted to an icy nine degrees with a minus four wind chill i'm why am i re reading weather stuff i want to hear about yeah. adults pissing their pants yeah, also fuck them for saying like the ball dropped and instead of saying like the shit dropped in their diapers yeah. they went with the temperature you're you're being handed a joke about shit in your pants when you're when the ball dropped at twelve a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they half this article is talking about the temperature. Nobody cares if people are cold you're, or getting <laughs> frostbite or hurt. Your title starts with adult diapers. Yeah, tell me true. about the diapers. I'm gonna just control F diapers. <laughs> I do that for any website I go on. Look, at, there's a photo here. It says Ayame Yamakawa in white coat who traveled from Okinawa, Japan, shows off her adult diaper as she waits with her friends. I told you, dude. She's fucking holding it. What? You, You're still in your own pee. It doesn't make it disappear. What yeah. do I look like? Fucking J.K. Rowling zapping. <laughs> no pee. By the way. But I don't want to. We'll, we'll mention that in a <laughs> yeah, second. We'll, but like. I what I think it is is I think most people in that crowd probably aren't from the US and I think that because we have this fucking event that I never watch on mm -hmm. TV but this event of the ball dropping that people think because that's kind of you know New York is one of like the cities I'm not saying it's like the best or yeah. anything but it's uh like one of these cities and they kind of do a huge um a New Year's Eve thing that the whole country watches that I think some tourists think like, no, that's what you do on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Like you stand, that's where you got to go. And then they're like, well, I bought my tickets and I bought my hotel and I'm about to go. What? I have to shit myself. <laughs> well, I can't get a refund. So, I'm you out. know, dude, I, <laughs> this line right here, some revelers gave up their secret adult diapers. Uh, so far, it's dry, and I'm hoping to keep it that way, said Dallas teacher Heather Feist, 32, who began lining up at 9.30 a.m. Others were not so lucky. Can I just say, what you we cannot be a teacher and be like, I'm hoping not to shit myself. Yeah. I'll see you students on Monday. <laughs> Others were not so lucky. Here's a quote. I'll definitely need to shower after peeing my pants all day. <laughs> Wait, do they have a name publicly? S said Ayame Yamakawa, no! 21. How would you like that if someone searches your name like, oh, we're going to hire her for a uh, management position. I'll definitely need to shower after peeing my Dude, pants all day. I don't understand people. Look at this. 21 who traveled 20 hours from Okinawa, Japan, just for New Year's Eve. She had already wet herself once by 2.41 p.m. after lining up at 10 a.m. You couldn't make it Come five on. hours. Come on. Come on. Then you were just like, well, I just want to see what it feels like. Yeah. Well, okay. This is just a bunch of pee fetish people looking for an excuse to piss yeah, in public. These now. are a bunch of, by the way, if that means they literally entered January, no, don't pee January pissing themselves. Yeah. They lost immediately. Negative points. But really though, I can't believe like a teacher is like hoping not to shit myself. Yeah. <laughs> like what if you're a middle school teacher? How who are you going to survive Monday with them? Yeah. Who knows?
Um, Anyone that shits themselves in an adult diaper in that situation, too, is an idiot. You can't, dude, it's very possible to go 24 hours without pooping. Yeah. And also, like, you know what's easier than standing in Times Square and pissing yourself? What's that? Standing a block away from Times Square and not having to piss yourself. That's probably fine, too, yeah. <laughs> um, well, speaking of the f- fucking shit disappearing, if you don't know, <laughs> um, on the Pottermore, which is like the Harry Potter extra lore website and Twitter account. Um, I don't know if she directly tweeted it. I feel like she did. She has full reign of that stuff, I right? I don't know for sure, okay. but she contributes a lot to Pottermore. Okay. The Pottermore Twitter account tweeted that in the until the 1800s when bathrooms were like invented, I guess, where it's like they didn't dig fucking holes. Yeah. But um, <laughs> that wizards or Hogwarts didn't have bathrooms and that... Basically, wizards would piss and shit themselves and just make it disappear as it came out. Yes. Which is like, what are you doing? What is that? What? What? At what point would anybody who has control of say? I'm not saying she tweeted it specifically. Yes. If you have control over your universe, your intellectual property, at what point would you let it get out of hand? <laughs> where somebody would rationalize. Fucking making pee and shit disappear as they leave your body, <laughs> and she's they she, the tweet said like went where they were standing or something like that. Where yeah. it was like they be in class, they wouldn't even walk into like a shame room yeah, and do it. Shit, what like shocked? What has fucking happened to Harry Potter, dude? Fantastic Beasts is so fucking bad. Yeah, like the new one especially. The first one was fine. If you watch the new one. It's insane. Everything that happens around Harry Potter now is batshit crazy, and yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, it makes so much money. I think it's just because people are just like, we got to just get more out of this, and stuff yeah. gets rushed, and people tweet about shitting their pants. and like. You know what I wrecked. like about it, though, hmm. is that it doesn't ruin Harry Potter because Harry Potter was just such a specific set story that there were books and movies, and it's over. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, do I really care about anything else that happens in the universe? Yeah. Most likely not unless they tell a good story. So when they make these bad stories, I'm not like, oh, no, they're ruining Harry Potter. It's like, that thing's done. Yeah. That was, I'm past that now. Yeah, no, you know? it's, it's protected. That would be like if uh, they found like an old Tolkien work where it was like Gandalf and Aragorn started like an intramural adult paintball league. I'd be like, that sucks, but I still like Lord of the Rings. You would think that sucks? That sounds pretty dope. Well, it's just the two of them. So there's not so a lot of just, league Are they play. on the same team? They're not even... They're just shooting walls. <laughs> well, they're looking for enemies. <laughs> <laughs> they're scouting it's middle just 10 Earth. minutes of them like, clear. clear. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking... You, you're telling me you wouldn't enjoy that if they I'd found an old that. That was a terrible book. example. If there was like they had a paintball league. I accidentally gave myself the coolest possible <laughs> example. Somebody animate that, please. Holy shit. <laughs> I just, uh, Sabrina and I watched the trilogy again. I like to save it for myself like once a year. Mind blowing. Did you see, have you ever seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Yeah, we we talked about this in the Christmas episode. I forgot. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, se- I've seen them and uh, I like them a lot, but yeah. I, I've only seen them once. Extended editions only, baby. 13 hours. We powered through it. God damn. And how long did that take you to? 13 hours. L- straight? No. Oh, no. That's what no. I mean. Like, how- I, I never understood how like people would be like, let's do a marathon day. I like Harry Potter shit. It's like, dude, I love Harry Potter. If I'm watching more than two of the movies at, in one day, I'm going to jump I off would a never, building. In a, in a, I, when I do a Harry Potter marathon, I can't do one a night. Yeah. It's like gotta, you just got to do it over like a month. Yeah. It's good or way. like two weeks or something. We did it in three days, though, is the thing. That's how, that's, that's how I did it before The Hobbit came out. It was too much, though. Because like genuinely, first movies, three hours, 20 minutes. Second, four 20 plays it the third one's five hours long it's too much see you like i know you say the extended edition is the only way to go but when i hear five hour movie i think no matter what that's too much yeah it's too much we had to break it up you know yeah like even throughout the day though is the thing i don't know still good i like it i'm not saying it's bad though i just want to i want to stress that for the people clickety clacking on their keyboards already (laughs) clicky clack don't type back there's a there's a uh I think I told you this. I just want to say it. I'm I'm gonna eventually make a video on this movie, so I'm not gonna mention it yet. But there was a bad movie from the '80s that I watched recently with my friends because we love getting drunk and watching bad movies. Mm-hmm. And the dad character in it said, 
a dibble dab of glue will do ya. <laughs> and I fucking lost my shit, dude. Like he said it fast, like a dibble dab of glue will do ya. And I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it because it wasn't like some weird quirky dad. He just said it. Yeah. You can't just say that in a movie. You can't just casually. Oh, it's a dibble dab of glue, you know. Yeah, <laughs> dibble dab of glue, do you? <laughs> it's fucking. I, it's hard to say. It's like a tongue. tongue oh, you cut your your arm really badly. We need to close up the wound. Well, if we just had a dibble dab of uh, super glue, that'd do you. But... That'll do you. <laughs> okay, let's go away now. <laughs> do you want that to be the ending? Yeah.